Hello, I'm Julian Crocker, the County Superintendent of Schools for San Luis Obispo County, and welcome to this edition of our County Schools Update. I want to start with a special note. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about school truancy and the recent report from the State Attorney General. And I wanted to acknowledge a very recent legislation by our own assemblyman, Kacho Ashajian, that was signed by the governor into law on September 30th. And this piece of legislation, which is now law, provides another tool for both schools and law enforcement to use in discouraging truancy from school. Uh, the bill, AB 2195, addresses weaknesses in the previous law that resulted in what we feel was using a very punitive, punitive approach to truancy by referring truants and their families to the court and law enforcement systems. Well, this new law, which was proposed primarily by Chief Jim Salio, our Chief Probation Officer here in San Luis Obispo County, now provides for an intermediate and I think more moderate step with a hearing officer rather than a juvenile judge and the options of working with families to encourage good attendance and to find out why students are not coming to school rather than just relying on punitive measures such as fines. There are still measures such as restriction of driving privileges for the student or mandatory community service, but more attention is now focused on addressing the reasons for poor school attendance. So I'd like to thank Chief Salio and Assemblyman Ashajian for their efforts uh, on this issue. Well, today's topic is about bullying, and particularly bullying at school and what to do about it. Well, there's certainly been a lot of attention recently about bullying in school and elsewhere. Uh, we hear about very severe injuries to students, uh, unfortunately even death, that is sometimes attributed to bullying. And I think most of us understand what bullying is and we know it when we see it, whether in children or adults or even among nations, frankly. Uh, recent research indicates that up to 20% of high school students feel they are victims of bullying when in school. And this ranges from very frequent victims to only an occasional and infrequent uh, victim. Girls tend to report verbal or relational and cyberbullying more, while boys report more physical bullying. For our purposes, let's say that bullying has three basic elements. Number one, it is intentionally aggressive behavior, often physical, from one person to another. Number two, it is repeated over time. And number three, the object is to gain control or power over the other person. And often that is to gain social approval from others. Now I do want to give credit to the work of Signe Whitson, whose book entitled Eight Keys to End Bullying is a very good analysis of bullying and what can be done to stop it. So I do recommend this book, Eight Keys to End Bullying. So what can adults, teachers, and parents do about bullying? Well, the first thing is to recognize bullying. Now, not all conflicts or just rudeness are actually bullying. It has to kind of confirm to that uh, definition that I talked about earlier. Adults need to intervene when they see bullying occur. Now this is harder than you may think since most bullying occurs out of sight of adults, like on playgrounds or in restrooms or buses and that type of thing. The intervention from an adult does not need to be lengthy, just a brief but very strong statement that that behavior is not acceptable and we need to move on to the task at hand. This lets the perpetrator know that an adult is watching and that bullying will not be tolerated and it also gives a sense of security to potential victims also. So that's the first thing, recognize it and take action. Secondly, we need to build strong relationships and social skills with students. Now families and classrooms are good places to foster and teach positive relationships, acceptance of differences, diversity, encouraging cooperation, and open communication. These are all skills that prevent bullying. 
These social emotional skills have been shown to decrease bullying and are much more powerful than just catching the bully in the act. The point here is that it takes an intentional effort by families and teachers to focus on social emotional learning for all students, including potential bullies, and accepting this learning as just as important as academic uh, requirements uh, of school. In fact, if we don't give priority to what might be called the softer skills, then students often are not receptive to the academic program because of fear or distraction caused by bullying. Concentrating on these social skills can also turn bystanders into people who intervene to stop bullying. Again, most bullying occurs in the presence of peers looking for social acceptance. The third way to deal with bullying is to confront cyberbullying. Now, cyberbullying or online bullying is something relatively new, and Whitson indicates that adults have made a big mistake in not responding to cyberbullying, often thinking perhaps because uh, they are too, we are too hesitant as adults, because it doesn't occur at school, or parents feel like they just can't keep up with the technological skills necessary to intervene, that their children are way ahead of them in terms of the use of technology. Well, this hands-off attitude really only emboldens the bully to use cyberbullying without a concern for intervention. So again, building positive relationships in families and in classrooms can also help with cyberbullying. So, in summary, bullying is a problem, it always has been, but not one that is without solutions. Perhaps the most important thing we as adults can do is to be active in recognizing and stopping bullying when we see it and building strong social and emotional skills for our children. Thank you.